Does Duluth Trading make a decent work boot or are they just overpriced garbage with the Duluth name slapped all over the place? Just like we've seen with a lot of the other workwear brands. Well, we're gonna find out today by running these through a bunch of scientific tests and cutting them in half to see if we can figure out the truth about Duluth Trading's boots. Raid Shadow Legends just celebrated their third anniversary as one of the top RPG games out there. With hundreds of artifacts to equip and over 600 champions blessed with unique skills, you can build your own team and develop your champions with Raid Your Way. Use my QR code or the links below to download Raid yourself to your mobile or PC. It's a free game, so try it out. It's, a, it's literally the, the freest and easiest way to support the channel because the more of you guys that download the game, try it out and like it, the more willing they are to sponsor videos. And there's just a ton happening with Raid this month. They've got special events every single day, including an entirely new event for the summer solstice called the Path of Light. Last year, Raid added a whole new faction, the Shadowkin, and they're a tribe of warriors from the Far East, recently liberated from the reign of evil, but that doesn't mean they're the good guys either. And for me, it's one of the coolest looking factions in the game. And another great addition to the game is the Doom Tower, 120 layers of bosses and doom and terror where you can try out your characters and test your skills against the Doom Tower. And if that wasn't enough, Raid is also running a special Deliana Chase event where existing players can get their hands on the amazing Deliana, a brand new legendary champion from the High Elves faction. All you have to do is log in and play for seven days between now and July 20th and you get it for free. All new players get the free starter pack that's worth almost $30. To kickstart your game, you get the free champion Tayrell, 20k silver, one XP boost, one energy refill, one ancient shard so you can summon a champion as soon as you get in the game, and that's all for free. So give Raid a try, it's a free download, and it helps the channel out by helping the sponsors, and thanks again to Raid. Now let's quickly go over the boot information for each, starting with the cheapest first, and work on our way up to the most expensive. So the brand is Duluth, the style is the Grindstone Light, we'll just call it the Lights from now on. The color I have is black, they weigh one pound even, they retail for $119.95, and they're made in Vietnam. The upper of this boot is a breathable mesh with leather on the sides and the thickness of the leather is about 1.6 millimeters thick. So pretty thin, that's more like a sneaker thickness range, but the quality is not bad. It definitely has that grain pattern on top and it's actually better than most of the sneakers that we've cut in half. Um, if we move to the inside of the shoe or boot, there's no counter cover on the inside, which is a huge issue with all these boots. And the lining is just a cheap mesh material. And even worse, the gusset of this shoe, there is no gusset. It stops immediately where the tongue is, is sewn on. There, there's no protection anywhere. And as for the construction, it looks like it's a direct injected molded outsole, but I think it's cemented because you can see little bits of glue on the side. So I'm, I'm guessing it's cemented. And then if we pull out the insole, it's just a cheap memory foam-ish type insole. And underneath is just a woven blasting board. And then finally the outsole is a rubber outsole. The durometer of it is about 65. And the general attributes that they try to sell this boot with are that has dry lux, it's an antimicrobial lining that wicks moisture away to help stink, help prevent it from stinking. And it also has tech tough. This bumper around the side here it's allegedly a abrasion resistant material, but if you look really close, all it is is a plastic coating on top of a really cheap suede leather. Next to our mid price boot, the brand is Duluth. The style is the Grindstone 2.0. We'll just call them the Grindstones from here on out. The color I have is brown. They weigh one pound, six ounces. They retail for $139.95, and they're also made in Vietnam. The upper of this boot is made from, it's actually a pretty decent leather. It does have the grain pattern on it, and it's treated with 3M Scotch Guard to help prevent water from seeping in through the leather and it helps prevent stains allegedly and this leather is a little bit thicker than the previous ones it's two millimeters thick so it's like that's a lot closer to that work boot range that you're wanting to work in then if we go to the inside the lining is the exact same lining as the previous and the insole is a little bit different but i'm not convinced it's better because it's got this green part around the heel that's a rigid like hard plastic almost and if you bend it you can see how when i bend this it starts to lighten up and it looks like if you flex this too many times that plastic is going to eventually split and crack and as for the counter this one doesn't have a dedicated internal counter cover either but one good thing is this tongue is actually gusseted up to the fourth eyelet so at least you've got five or six inches of waterproofness and as for how the shoe is built i believe this one is cemented as well and as for the outsole of this boot it's a little bit harder than the previous boot it's like it comes into the 75 shore a and the general attributes that they try to sell this boot with are it's 100 percent waterproof a breathable 
Duluth Dry construction, which basically means there's a, a waterproof booty throughout this entire boot that we'll show you when it get cut in half. And it also has the dry lux lining like the previous one. And it claims to have a multi-durometer EVA midsole. And it also has the tough toe, same thing as the previous boot. And I couldn't figure out what silicium is. So we looked it up and it's just the German word for silicon. So a really fancy workaround to say that it's just really cheap leather with a silicone coating on top. Silicon. And finally to the most expensive of the three, the brand is Duluth. The style is the Wedge Stone. We're gonna call them the Mock Toes. The color is brown. They weigh one pound, 12 ounces. They retail for $189.95 and these ones are made in China. The leather of this boot is kind of hit and miss because it's a thinner leather at 1.6 millimeters thick which is a bit on the thin side for a work boot, but it is a really soft tumbled leather and it has a very clearly fake print on top to make it look better than what it is. And for this price, I thought it would be more of that two to 2.2 millimeters thick range, but it's not. Um, as for the lining, the exact same lining. The counter, same as before, no counter cover. The tongue is gusseted about as high as the grindstones. And the insole of this one is pretty interesting. It kind of looks like Ultra Boost. You can see they have like little foam pellets in there that are, looks like they're fused together with another type of foam or material in there. But it might just be painted to look this way. We'll see if it, when we get it cut in half, there's actually individual pellets or if it just is made to look like that. And then under the insole, just like the grindstones, you can't see what it is because that lining wraps all the way underneath. The outsole of this boot is an interesting outsole because it's, a, it's actually a Vibram outsole and it's a dual density outsole. You've got that harder rubber that's a 65 shore A that's like three, four millimeters thick. And then this foam wedge is 50 shore A. So the idea behind this is that you have the, the toughness of that rubber skin on the bottom, plus the, the, the comfort and the squishiness and the shock resistance of the foam. But the problem with this type of sole is sometimes if they're not built the right way, they can be prone to delaminating. And we saw some reviews on Duluth's website that says that does happen to these boots. But as for the construction of this boot, they say it's a Goodyear welted boot. And you can tell that the welt itself is plastic, which is fine for around this $200 price range, like the Thorough Goods and some of, the, some of these other work brands still use a, a, a synthetic welt. The problem with these welts is that if it's really cold outside or if they get tons of wear, a lot of times it'll end up splitting and cracking. And as for the attributes they use to try to sell this boot, the first one is spike. So it's a puncture resistant tech somewhere through the midsole. We'll see what it is. I don't, I feel like it's not a steel plate like we saw in those jungle boots but we'll see, maybe it's like Kevlar or something. They also have the tough diamond resistant heel reinforcement, this layer of rubber right here. We'll see if it actually covers a layer of leather or if it's just the rubber itself and how thick it is when we get it cut in half. And it also has the Drylex liner like we talked about. It also has Duluth Dry, that waterproof booty on the inside. And they really hit the Goodyear welted aspect of this shoe hard. So now that we've laid out the contenders, you know what they've claimed, let's put them to the test. So first what we're gonna do is the waterproof test. And we're gonna start with the lights because they don't claim to be waterproof. So it'll give us a good control to make sure that our waterproof test is actually showing if things are waterproof. And as you can see, not waterproof. And that's because it's clearly meshed through the, throughout half of the boot. And then we move to the grindstones, which claim to be waterproof. So we dunked them in up to the gusset, just a little bit below. So we actually have water slipping in. And we left them in for five minutes and no water seeped in through the inside. So they are waterproof, at least when they're brand new. And then we finally went to the mock toes. Same thing, just raised that water level up just below the gusset, left them in for five minutes, and they're waterproof as well. And one thing that's worth noting about these cheaper waterproof boots is a lot of times they don't use the higher quality waterproofing booty on the inside. They use kind of a cheaper version or a knockoff version. And the problem with it, that is, is at first they're waterproof because they haven't been used, but after you start flexing them and moving them and start really wearing the boots, the, that booty on the inside is just a really thin layer of almost plastic. So after it flexes a ton of times, it starts to split and crack and separate, making your boots not waterproof. And then next to the puncture resistance test, where hopefully we'll see if this spike feature on the mock toes actually shines. So first we did the lights, and this one did surprisingly well at 126.5 pounds. And the weird thing about this one was because this outsole is so soft and it's so stretchy and cheap, I feel like the reading was a little bit off because as we 
tried to push through, the whole shoe just kind of deformed. There's not a whole lot of structure to this. So we might need to adjust this test a little bit to make it a little bit more fair moving forward. And then we did the grindstones next. And this one performed worse than the lights, which was surprising, because this one only took 114 pounds. And then finally to the puncture resistant mock toe boots that have the spike technology on the inside. We put it in the Arbor Press, started pressing down, and it did perform slightly better at 130.5 pounds, but not as not that much better surprisingly so I, i'm not sure exactly what they're using to make it more puncture resistant but to only be four pounds more puncture resistant than the lights and 15 more than the the grindstones was a little bit surprising i thought for sure it'd be i thought for sure with the spike technology on the inside it would be puncture resistant but not much and then next we move to the bar drop test to, to see how much energy return actually comes from these boots. Because that's always a big thing that people talk about in, in work boots and sneakers. Because if you're working all day, you want some cushioning, but you also don't want to be walking around feeling like you're walking in sand all day. So we started with the lights first, dropped the bar, and it bounced back up five inches, which was, was pretty surprising for how cheap and light the boot feels. But the interesting thing is, once we pulled it off, the insole was split all the way through, and so was the lasting board. So even though it did rebound a fair amount, there wasn't enough cushioning on the inside to prevent that bar from almost splitting the boot all the way through to the insole. The only thing that didn't split was the rubber itself. And then we moved to the grindstones, dropped it, and it did 5.25 inches, so about the same, but it didn't split all the way through the insole, and it didn't split through the lasting board either. So at least this one has a little bit more real cushioning, a little bit more durable materials through the, the midsole, at least we think. And then we moved to the mock toes, and I thought this one would be a lot more energy return because you got that big wedge through there, but it only bounced up three inches. So maybe it cushioned it a little bit more, but the energy return wasn't quite as much as the other two boots. And this one didn't really split through anywhere. You know, this one was a lot more durable when it comes to that bar actually dropping on the boot. And then just out of curiosity, because there is such a difference between the three insoles, we ran the same test on the insoles. And so we started with the lights again first, bounced up 2.5 inches, then to the grindstones, bounced up 1.5 inches, and then finally the super techy uh, mock toes with the pop flight. This one only bounced up 1.5 inches. So maybe not quite as much of a difference between these three insoles. You know, I think at the end of the day, these are all just kind of a cheap foam insole that, that don't really make much of a difference in how these boots perform. And then before we cut them in half, we got to do the flame test because they are work boots. Sometimes people work around flames, but mostly it's just fun to burn boots and see how they react. So we started with the lights again first. And as you can see, this thing has got pretty deformed you know the, the the mesh material burned up pretty quick the midsole really melted but the leather performed pretty well and the stitching stayed together pretty well it surprised me how well this one did then we moved to the grindstones and this one because there's so many different panels and there's so much stitching the boot just started falling apart and the way we did this test is we, we put it 10 inches away and left it on the boot for 10 seconds and this one did not fare well because of all that stitching. And then we moved to the mock toes, and this one performed about as well as the, the grindstones, slightly better, but the leather was a lot worse off. You can see how much more this is cracked, and I think that's because it's a thinner leather, and it's a little bit more supple, and you can see how this, the stitching has completely come unraveled. And one thing that really surprised me is if you look really closely at this eyelet, that eyelet deformed from 10 seconds of flame. So it must just be like a really cheap aluminum eyelet because there's, there's no way brass would, would melt like that and there's no way steel would. So even at the eyelets, it seems like we're starting to cut a little, a few corners here and there. So not a great sign. So now let's get these cut in half so that we can actually judge the quality of construction of these boots. Because after looking at the results of the test, aside from the waterproof test, you might assume that these are all in the same price range based on how they performed. So now let's cut the other boot in half that's not completely torched and ruined.
All right, got them cut in half, and I did not feel a steel shank in any of these boots. I don't even think I felt a shank at all, to be honest. But we'll see when we open them up. So let's start with the lights. So looking at the lights first, it does have a shank in it, but it's a completely useless composite shank. It doesn't add really much of any stability or any structure to the boot. It's just a shank in the name because it's it's too soft to really act as a shank. And the foam is a pretty soft foam. It comes in at a 25 short A, and it, but there's just not very much of it. And because it's such a soft foam, and because the outsole is so soft and you don't have much of a and you don't really have a shank in there, it's not gonna be a comfortable boot for very long. It, it kind of looks like a Keen, where you've got the really slim outsole with not a whole lot of heel, but an absolutely terrible version of a Keen boot. But the worst thing about this boot, and the worst thing about any of these boots, look at this lump underneath your toes right here. See how that void is caused by the way the upper's tucked underneath? Imagine standing on that all day, every day. You know, it's, and it's not just at the toes, you can see how it wraps, that upper's wrapped all the way underneath and that leads me to believe that this is just a cemented boot that's not injection molded because it doesn't contour to that upper. And just the whole construction of it is really shoddy. You can see the strobel stitch on the inside isn't great and doesn't have the counter cover and all the various flaws this boot already has that we pointed out. I'd stay away from this boot at all costs. This is an absolutely terrible boot. So next, moving to the grindstones. Once again, an absolutely useless and terrible shank. If you, if you have a shank in your boot, you shouldn't be able to bend it that easily because it's not actually doing anything, because the purpose of a shank is to help support your foot, whether you're climbing on ladder rungs, whether you're hitting shovels, it's, su it's supposed to support the arch of your foot, but that isn't gonna do anything. Um, at least this foam is a little bit harder though. This one comes in at a 30 short A, but this foam is just a really cheap foam through and through, all these boots are, because just the feel of this foam, it feels a lot more like packing foam where it doesn't have a lot of that that rebound and a lot of that uh, structure in it. It just feels like a, a really cheap foam. And more importantly, there's no dual density and no dual foam durometer in this anywhere. There's just one slab of foam that once again is clearly not injection molded because you've got these huge voids where the lugs are. And I guess there is a layer of foam above the lasting board, but it's so thin that I would hardly consider it a part of the midsole and part of the comfort of the shoe. So to me, that's a, a little false advertising because it's clearly just a chunk of foam in there. And these voids in the lugs, you might think they're for comfort and they squish easier, but they're just gonna wear out faster because there's nothing backing them. So every time you step on them, and you can just see how soft and easy they are to collapse. It's just gonna lead to premature wear rather than having those lugs completely filled with, with rubber. And they do that not to make it more comfortable, but to save money and material cost. But at least now we can see that lining that I was talking about. And now you can see how thin and how, how weak that would be if you started wearing these every single day. Like it's gonna keep water out now, but once you've really worn these, it's just gonna wear out and the waterproofness will be gone. So these boots are slightly better than the lights, but they, they're they still terrible boots at the end of the day. You know, they're, they're almost like they're a, a kid's work boot. Like if you're gonna make a, a work boot for kids, yeah, you'd, you'd throw a shank in there just so you can say there's a shank and you'd, be, you'd put some foam in the midsole and you'd put, lugs on the bottom, but you wouldn't fill the lugs up to save money because it's just a kid's boot. That's how I view this boot because it's not made for work. It's made for the, the appeal and the look of a work boot, the features of a work boot without, without actually having the benefits of those features. So once again, I would stay away at all costs, especially for 140 bucks. So the mock toes might be the last hope for Duluth and their boots because it is really a Goodyear welted construction. You can see the stitches going through and you can see that double layer of that anti-puncture material. Even though it didn't actually add much to the puncture resistance of the boot, at least what they say is in there is in there. But as you can see, like I can easily show you the different layers and that's because all these layers are not glued together and they're all loose and floppy. And the problem with that, and it's the same thing we, we talked about in the Carhartt boots, is all those independent layers are fine if you're just standing all day, but as soon as you start walking, those layers slowly rub against, against each other, prematurely wearing each of those layers out. And when you've only got foam in there and a couple layers of, of like a cheaper material, it's gonna wear out pretty quick. So not great on the construction, but one thing that is pretty good is that this rubber on the heel, it's pretty thick. It's 3.5 millimeters thick, but it's not backed by leather, which isn't that big of a deal, but 
it would just be better if it was backed with leather because then you have an even more protection. And, and another thing that surprised me was this insole really is individual bead, beads of foam that are fused together with another type of foam. Because you can see in the cross section how the, I've cut the actual beads in half. And another big flaw with this boot is a lot of people like the mock toe style boots because it gives you a lot more wiggle room in the toe. But if you compare these two, clearly the mock toe has like half the room as these, these other two boots. So there's really no reason to have the mock toe if you're not getting any of the, any of the benefits of a mock toe because having that mock toe stitch 